Hello, I'm Mark Rees and welcome to my Curious Podcast, where in each episode I look at a different, weird and wonderful subject. And this time out, I'll be exploring the mysteries surrounding a diabolical work of art known as the Swansea Devil, which, if the stories are to be believed, was responsible for destroying a church and then later on mysteriously vanishing without a trace, which led to a media appeal in order to track down this satanic statue. But before we get into any of that, I'd like to start by reading to you a 19th century curse which was placed upon the head of that devil. And there are not many podcasts that start with a 19th century curse. And it goes like this. My devil will be able to leer and laugh. For at some time in the future, he will see St. Mary's burn to the ground. Yes, that was the 19th century curse. And that will make a lot more sense when we come back to it later on. Now, of all the subjects that I've, I've written about and researched, I think the Swansea Devil would have to be, if, if not my favourite, certainly in the top five. And I think what I love about it the most is the way the story weaves historical fact with elements of folklore. And best of all, this isn't some, some ghost story of some imaginary creature out there that may or may not have existed. The Swansea Devil does exist. I know exactly where the Swansea Devil is right now. And if, after listening to this story, you would like to come face to face with the Swansea Devil, I can tell you exactly how you can do so. Now, before we go into the, the story and the facts of the case, I think it's worth giving you a detailed description of what this devil looks like. Because while y you can pop on and do an internet image search right now and have a look at this devil, which I would recommend you do if you can, looking at a work of art on a monitor screen, on a, on a phone screen, is never the same. Because first of all, it gives you no idea of scale. You could be looking at William Blake's The Ghost of a Flea, which is a minuscule, sort of eight inches by six inches. Or you could be looking at Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, and they would look the same size on the screen. And also, the, the colours go all a bit weird, and you don't know what angle it's been photographed from, especially a work like this, which is a sculpture, which means there are different sides to it. Are you looking at it from the front, face on? Are you looking at it from the sides? Are you looking at it from the back? And so on. Also, what is it made of? Well, in this case, the Swansea Devil is made of wood. It is a wood carving which dates from the 19th century, and it's about three feet high, so about the size of a toddler, uh, if it were placed on the ground. But of course, it, it's rarely seen sitting on the floor. Appearance-wise, it does resemble a devil. It may or may not be a devil. I'll come to that later in the uh, later in the podcast. But it has all of the elements you would expect to find in a, a sort of modern day or 19th century uh, depiction of the devil. It has horns on its head, a bit, a bit like a goat would have. It has that sort of quite distinctive goatee beard, which he is indeed stroking with one of his hands, or at least is leaning his chin onto one of his hands. It has that long forked tail, quite quite a chunky tail in this case. His tail is, is almost the width of, of, of a leg, um, which is curling round to the front. And the devil has a smile on his face. So this is a, clearly a devil that is, it, it, he's thinking about something amusing or something, something has certainly tickled to this devil, put it that way. And this is the object we are talking about. Now onto the story and what I'll do, I'll whiz through the entire tale Historical fact, folklore legends, all mixed up into one. And then we'll pick it apart at the end, where I can tell you what is real 
uh, what may or may not be. And what is, I think, quite exciting about the Swansea Devil is this is a story which is not finished yet. This continues to evolve. People are still researching and developing new facts about this, this wonderful work of art, day after day, um, which, which, fingers crossed, hopefully will lead to a follow-up uh, podcast at some point. But let's begin with the story of the Swansea Devil, which starts in the 19th century in, unsurprisingly, Swansea. Which, as you may or may not know, is a city in Wales. It is the second biggest city in the country. Although, for the purposes of our story, in the Victorian period, it was still a town. And at the centre of this town, then, as today, was their centrepiece church, a church called St Mary's. And the decision was made to rebuild it. The tender was opened to find an architect to rebuild this, this most prestigious of churches. And while several local architects put their, their suggestions forward, it was awarded to quite a celebrated English architect called Arthur Blomfeld, and his major works included being the architect for the Bank of England, and he designed the Royal College of Music in London. So this was not an unpopular choice. The people of Swansea on the whole, were pleased to have such a prestigious architect taking care of their treasured church. But there was one man, at least, who was not happy. We do not have his name, but we do know he was a local architect who felt seriously aggrieved that such a lucrative contract should be given to some outsider coming to Swansea, taking work from, as he saw it, local architects. And as time went by and the church was built, he did not forgive and forget. He stewed in his hate. And then the perfect opportunity for revenge presented itself. The plot of buildings directly next to the church became available. He snapped them up, demolished them, and then built his own buildings on that ground, which now towered over St. Mary's new church. And on the facade of that building, in the centre, above the windows, staring directly down at that church, he placed a wooden carving of what appeared to be a devil. He had placed an image of God's greatest enemy on the building next door to his new church, staring defiantly at all of Christianity. And upon that devil, he placed his curse, which we opened this podcast with, and that was, my devil will be able to leer and laugh, for at some future time he will see St. Mary's burning to the ground. Now that devil did indeed look as if it was leering and laughing. It had a twinkle in its eye as it stroked its chin with a big grin on its face and it was left there to oversee the church until some half a century later that prophecy came true. That church burnt to the ground And that devil survived unscathed, watching on. It was in 1941 that that fateful day arrived at the peak of the Second World War. The Nazis were sending their planes towards Britain to destroy what they considered important strategic areas. And Swansea, with its bustling harbour, was considered an important port in the war effort by the Germans. And as such, the planes targeted Swansea and for three consecutive nights battered the city, changing it beyond recognition. Anyone visiting Swansea now will notice how many new buildings there are in the centre of that city. And that is because it was so badly destroyed by the Nazis. There was next to nothing left standing. The church was burnt 
to the ground. And yet the devil on the building next to it survived totally unharmed. That prophecy, it would appear, had come true. Time passed and the devil remained in place on that building, which had various uses over the years until 1962 when that devil stood in the way of progress. The area was becoming increasingly commercialised. The council were going to build a large quadrant shopping centre next to the church and a shopping precinct area on the other side of it. And that building on which the devil was perched stood in the way. New buildings were constructed. Old buildings were torn down. And that devil miraculously disappeared in a puff of smoke. Well, maybe not a puff of smoke, I just made that bit up for effect, but he certainly disappeared. Nobody had any idea where this devil had gone. Until the 1980s, when my former employers, the South Wales Evening Post, the local newspaper for, for Swansea and the surrounding area, published an appeal to ask for any information on the devil's whereabouts. And in a dramatic twist of fate, there was one man who lived in Germany and, as luck would have it, just happened to be back in Swansea. When that article was published, contacted the Evening Post and told them where they could find that devil. Because he was, apparently, no longer in Swansea and no longer in Wales, but gathering dust in an antique dealer's in Hereford. Now, as a quick aside at this point, I should point out that there is some confusion out there as to where exactly this, this devil was during this time. But uh, when I initially began researching this, I was told that the devil was actually in Gloucester. Uh, this is a mistake, it was actually in Hereford. But in um, at least one article that I published, I did say Gloucester. This has been picked up by other people, and, and a, a rumour has spread that the devil was in Gloucester. This is not true. It was never in Gloucester. It was in Hereford. But anyway, back to the story. It was in Hereford, and the Evening Post, um, a former colleague of mine, journalist called Chris Peregrine, um, along with a photographer and, and historian, they went to Hereford, they picked up the Swansea Devil and they brought him back home to Swansea. There was, of course, an issue to be dealt with when they got back to Swansea, and that was where to put the Devil. His former home had been demolished, and there was now a shopping quadrant and a shopping complex and things there instead. And it was decided the best place to put that Devil would be in the shopping centre. Now, this is where I, I personally enter the story because um, at the time I, I was quite quite young in the in the eighties, but I first encountered the devil then because he was placed above the entrance of Swansea Market, and so anyone going into the Quadrant Shopping Centre and walking into the indoor market would see this statue of a devil looking down at them, and for uh, an impressionable young person. Uh, that, that, that's an image that, that, that sticks in your mind, being watched, uh, watched by a devil as you go about your shopping. And so the story was wrapped up for a while. The devil was back home, or rather it had a new home in the Quadrant Shopping Centre. But it never really stayed still for long. It started its new life above the market where I remember seeing it, but it would then disappear and reappear in various vantage points throughout the centre, peering down at other people as they went about their shopping. And for quite some time, up until quite recently, it was actually placed on top of the shopping centre, facing directly towards the church, just as it had done in the 19th century. And part of the curse, uh, so it is said, I think this is a later edition, but it does state that the devil should always be looking in the direction of St. Mary's Church. So wherever it is placed in the world, it should be turned to face towards that church. All of which brings us up to the current day, 
when the mystery took an other unexpected turn. Now, it was a few years ago when I was researching a book called The A to Z of Curious Whales, which has since been published. And one of the subjects I wanted to include in that book was the Swansea Devil. And so I popped along to the quadrant and noticed this devil had disappeared once more. So I made some inquiries and spoke with the the security and people there, and they were very helpful, but nobody had any idea where this devil had gone, or they certainly were not telling me if they did know where this devil had gone. And for the sake of the book, The A to Z of Curious Whales, I simply had to say that, you know, it's, it's in the quadrant somewhere, it moves around a lot. At the time of writing, God knows where it is, it's, it's disappeared again. Um, now, call it Sod's Law, but whenever you write a book, or whenever I write a book, I should say, um, somewhere, something in the world is going to happen that will make some part of that book out of date before it even hits the shelves. After sending this book off to be printed, I had an excited message from a friend of mine at Swansea Museum. And it turns out the reason that Devil was no longer on display in the Quadrant Shopping Centre is because it had been kicked out. And it now had a new home in Swansea Museum, which is just a five-minute walk away from the Quadrant. Now, this was fantastic news because what this means is that the devil can now be cared for by the experts. This, 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 I mean, it's, it's well over 100 years old and it's made of wood. It needed the proper TLC to make sure it survived. And also, it meant that anyone can visit the devil whenever they choose to do so and look at it eye, eye to eye, um, as opposed to the quadrant where it was a bit hit and miss whether or not you'd see it. So that is all great. The only downside of it going to the museum is that my my lovely new book <laughs> was out of date before it even hit the shelves. And just to really rub in that mistake, my launch party was actually at the museum. I launched that book in the museum. The devil was with me when I launched that book. Maybe he was laughing and leering at, at my mistakes. Maybe, maybe he had also placed his curse on me as well. I don't know. But luckily, that, that, that has been corrected in the second print onwards. So if you were to buy the A to Z of Curious Whales now, um, and, unless you go out and buy some secondhand copy, it is correct. And it does say that the devil is now in Swansea Museum. And it is since being in Swansea Museum that some, what I think, are very interesting new details have come to light. One of the most interesting things for for me personally happened during my book launch there when a couple, uh, a man and a woman, came along and they brought with them a printout of a photograph to show me. Now, it turns out that the lady had been born and raised inside the house on which the Swansea devil was Perched. At the time, it was a, uh, a family business. Um, I, I believe the family business is still in Swansea on, on High Street now. But at the time, the business was based in that building with the Swansea Devil on it. And she lived upstairs above the shop, pretty much on the same level as the Swansea Devil. And one very interesting detail about the Devil at the time this photo was taken where I, I don't know exactly when that was, but clearly it was it was well before 1962. And that is the devil's colour. It was entirely black. Head to tail in black. Now, to look at the devil today, it is coloured in the colours you would expect to see to see Lucifer. It has a red tail and red legs and then the, the dark black horns and beard, as, as you might expect. But in 1962, and we can only assume in the 19th century when it was created, it was entirely black. Now, this could, of course, simply mean that the devil was was not painted, or maybe the, the original creator wanted a black devil. Another way of looking at it, though, is that this was made in the 19th century, at a time when, artistically, 
Some artists were looking back to the ancient Greeks and the Romans for inspiration, and it has been suggested that this could be maybe the Greek god Dionysus or the Roman god Bacchus, the god of wine and fertility, and often associated with, with a hedonistic lifestyle, living life to the full, living life in a devilish way. And there, there was also the suggestion, I can't entirely see this myself, but this devil was once holding a glass of wine, which does tie in very nicely with the theory that it could be Bacchus, if indeed he was holding a glass of wine. Well, another wonderful theory, which has, has been suggested since it's been in the museum, is that for the first time you can clearly see the back of this devil, because this devil was always up on high beforehand. Now it's down at our level in, in a glass case. And by looking at the back, we can now see, and this is something that didn't really occur to me beforehand, but the back of that devil is flat. It has not been carved like the rest of the devil. It is flat. And uh, again, I don't know of the technicalities of this, but it has been suggested that it could have been a figurehead on a boat. Which does, of course, beg the question, who would want a devil, if, if indeed a devil it is, leading their boat through the high seas? But again, a very fascinating idea. And if you do go to see the devil in the museum, or even if you just look at photographs online, I think it's worth bearing in mind that when this was originally made, you know, be that as a figurehead or as Bacchus or whatever it was supposed to be, it was probably not designed to be looked at as we now look at it face on. It was, even if we go back to the earliest that we know, it was up on high on a building. We are supposed to be looking up at this object. And the way we see it now, where we, we are almost looking down on it because of the scale, its eyes look a bit shifty. It almost looks like it's not keeping eye contact with us. But of course, that is purely because of the way it is displayed nowadays. And when seen from below, those eyes look like they're staring straight at you. And that smile suggests that he might be thinking up some wickedness just for us. And one final nice little touch that I love that they've done at Swansea Museum is that the devil has been positioned in such a way that even though he is not overlooking his arch enemy that hated church, he is still staring in the direction of that church. There might be a, a, a dual carriageway and a Tesco in the way, but nevertheless, he is staring straight at that church. And so this prophecy stays in place. Now, I like to wrap up my podcasts by asking if anyone out there has any of their own stories they'd like to share about the subject. But in this case, I already have some new stories which have been sent to me. This really is the, the, the tale that keeps on giving the Swansea Devil. Now, the first one is that I have it on good authority from somebody with a very keen interest in Swansea history that they can remember seeing the devil pre-1962. And it wasn't entirely head-to-toe in black. It did have two splashes of colour on it, and they were two red dots in place of eyes. And so this figure might have had glowing red eyes with which to peer down at us with. And this does lean us back towards the idea that maybe it, it is diabolical in nature rather than more of a, a god of wine type character. Another very, very fascinating piece of information has also come to light, which was sent to me in an email by a man who remembers seeing in a pub on more than one occasion a second Swansea devil. So not only is there a cursed object out there burning down churches, there might well be more than one of them. And this is something I will definitely be investigating further, and I'll be sure to let you know where you can read or listen to that uh, as, as and when it's ready. And I should also point out that while I've focused on the Swansea Devil for the purposes of this podcast, there are so many more interesting 
curiosities to be found in Swansea Museum, which is this wonderful, old-school, traditional museum that doesn't have to rely on silly multimedia gimmicks that, that nobody really wants, you know. And, and I'll be looking at some other items from their collection, I imagine, in, in the podcasts to come. All of which brings me to the obligatory request that you hit the subscribe button if you have enjoyed this podcast. Um, There are lots more on the way, lots more myths and legends and ghosts and folklore. So if you hit subscribe, you'll get an alert so you know when each episode is ready. And also, after listening to that story, please bear in mind that while we may laugh at them now, some of these 19th century curses do come true. And remember, my devil will be able to leer and laugh, for at some time in the future, he will see St. Mary's burn to the ground. And he did indeed. Thank you very much. Diochen Varian, no star.